the we have to close the uh, the last camp we did, uh, which was Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, and just to explain a few things, I think it's good that we are all on the same same page on the on the same path. Now, our job is to get Jamaica into the World Cup in 226. So all our actions are in in accordance to that. Uh, what will help us in the long run. So that was basically the first step for us to to see players that we 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 could from the domestic league, young players from from England, etc. So the priority was to look at players and give them a chance to give them a play in time uh, and give them a chance to understand and show that they, they understand our team tactics. Uh, and as everybody saw, the, the playing time was was divided uh, between the players. So everybody got, got their minutes. Most of them got at least 45 minutes. Some of them... Uh, some of them, or, or most of them, played almost 90 minutes. So it was not about the performance. It was not about who is the best. Uh, so we just wanted to see all the players play. Uh, young squad, promising players. Uh, and our question was, do you have what it takes? Uh, and if not now, then you know what do we need to do to help you for the next two, three years? Uh, or you know, shall we need to wait a little bit and see you later and then when if it's in one year if it's in uh, two years we, we check you again so uh, the wish the, the best thing would be uh, if a player comes for his first national team camp uh, and is is completely ready for the first team and for the for the competitive games but that really doesn't happen often so that that is our that was our first camp uh, these games against Trinidad, we, we had a lot of questions. We got answers, some positive answers, some negative answers, but in the end, they will all be, all be good that we got answers to, to all of our questions regarding these players. So we now know in our mind who we think is ready now to go, with, go in the journey for 226 with us, uh, or we need to wait and, and see some others a little bit later. What kind of personalities are these players? Uh, we know that now from from working with them for a week um, and just to 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 see them in our environment uh, i've talked a lot about our working environment so now we have seen them in our environment in our tactics so will they function or will they not function we have, we have answers to to these questions so if i compare if our job as coaches would have been uh, like coach, you have to win all your matches for the next four years, especially the friendlies. If that would be our task, um, then of course we number one wouldn't have selected a lot of play these players in this squad. Uh, we, we would have not have selected young, unexperienced players. I think it was about eleven players playing the first match for for Jamaica, um, and we would would have focused on. This match, you know, not 2026, we would have put our focus and tried to get all the, the best players everywhere for, for this match, not, not the young, young players. So, so that's the difference between how we think and probably some, of course, and I understand Jamaicans that they wanted to win uh, Trinidad. It's a, it's a rivalry. So I don't know if you have the squad uh, already, but it should be. Is the squad already to the to it's the going players? Up, it's going, it's going, going. Oh. So it's probably now in. Uh, so unusual, we are, we are selecting five players from the last camp uh, for this squad. Um, that is that is unusual, but uh, it's it's close between it's close between these camps. So so uh, it was easy to select one. They they at least have the advantage of being with us for one week, uh, and again they know. They know what we expect, what we want. So, yeah, that, that is unusual. Now, if we talk about the football side of this, these Trinidad matches, it was we were not happy with how we played. Uh, a lot of technical mistakes. Um, players, of course, haven't played together, so they were they were showing short, but the ball came long, etc. So, just misunderstanding between players. Um, 
but it was a lot of long balls. It was way, way, way too much of long balls. It was lack of patience on the ball, a lack of confidence and creativity on the ball. So that is that is the things that it's probably connected to to the things they are doing normally in the league here. It's a it's a lot of long ball. So it's it's one thing to teach them what we want. It's it's a different thing to to get them to get rid of their their old habits. So so that was something that we we will then know in the future. So but we wanted so much at least to mix the long balls with short balls. But we wanted to keep the ball on the ground, the use of flanks, etc. But but at least it was possible to play a good combination passing game in the London Spa. So leaving leaving this Trinidad Tobago camp and and focus on focus on the Mexico one. Of course, we have big respect for Mexico. Uh, I watched them uh, so two games in in Qatar in the World Cup. Really. Uh, um, Aggressive uh, team, uh, attacking wise, quick, skillful, especially top three players, really attacking minded, high pressing team. Uh, so it's a, it's a lot of things that we need to be aware of when we go to to Mexico. But we we say, and we are not shy to say, we are going there to win because it's a truly important game for us, Jamaica. Number one, it's a, a nation league match. So if we, if we uh, win, we go to a semi-final and a final in the nation's league. So we have a chance to win a, a trophy. That's one reason. Secondly, uh, we will get a semi-final and a final in June. Really good uh, preparation matches for the Gold Cup. So that is a, a, a second advantage of advantage. And then the third one is that that it's a good prep for the for the Cup to play a semi-final and a final uh, in USA before we, we go to the World Cup campaign. The Gold Cup campaign, sorry. So a must win game for us uh, and only a win can get us to the semi-final. So we go there with a, with a plan to, to win Mexico. If, that, if we are successful or not, we will just have to see, but we will go there with a plan to win Mexico. Because um, we, we expect Mexico to win Suriname in the, in, in the game uh, in three days, I think. So, uh, so our, 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 our selection of the squad took a little bit longer than we wanted. We wanted to, to announce the squad earlier. But um, it's an echo. It's an echo here. But um, because the Guatemala game is now off, we wanted to see some of the players that we plan to see in uh, in that match. So we wanted to change uh, a little bit our thought about the squad. So so we changed a little bit from what we 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 had in mind. Uh, there are injuries to Blake. His injuries to Michael Antonio and uh, Omari Hutchinson. Hutchinson is not available. Uh, it's a personal reasons. So apart from these three, all players are available and all players are accepted to come. So we are really happy with the with the squad we have. So uh, six players here in the squad now that we we are seeing for the first time is Taxi. Is Pinnock, Boyce Clark uh, from Reading, Amal Knight, we haven't seen him before, Corey Burke and, and Jonathan Russell. So that's, that's six players we haven't seen before. We are really looking forward to seeing them. So uh, I hope you have the squad. If there's any questions, then we are, we are open to answer the questions regarding Mexico. You should read the squad. I should read the squad. Yes, I don't have it. So if yeah. so 
So if you don't have the squad, I can read it here. It's Amari Bell, Jamal Lowe, Ethan Pinnock, Jonathan Russell, Bobby Reed, Demario Phillips, Dexter Lampikiza, uh, Adrian Mariapa, Kevin Lambert, Jamali Wade, Cory Burke, Damian Lowe, Daniel Johnson, Ravel Morrison, Kahim Paris, Richard King, Shyama Nicholson, Trivante Stewart, Konaya Boyce Clark, Amal Knight, Javain Brown, Kemal Lawrence, and Leon Bailey. All right. Any any questions for the coach? All right. Let's start with Mr. Parchment. Go ahead. Yes. Good morning, coach. Um, you said that the intention is to win, but um, when you came here to this job, what what were your thoughts of the public and their what some would call short short short-sightedness or impatience and does does that feed into to you telling us this morning that, that those intentions that it's to win no 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 no. this is just a, a different assignment a different task a, a, a different kind of a match this is a tournament game so uh, of, mm -hmm. of course that is the priority and it's it is a highly important for us match it would help us a lot to win to go through to the semi-final in the Nations League, that will give us, like I said, two good preparation matches um, for the Gold Cup. So, yeah, it, it's always better to play play official matches rather than friendlies. All right, Daniel Wheeler, Lina, Daniel, go ahead. Yes. Um, oh, you, are you hearing me? Yes, yes. Yeah. You, you, muted, you muted yourself again. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, Coach, two questions. Um, one regarding the inclusion of... Um, is John, John Russell, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, yep. Um, yeah. Just wanted to find out in terms of what did... Um, it's obviously his first call-up. I wanted to find out in terms of what um, you've heard or saw from him that decided to give him in terms of um, a try and, and to evaluate him in a, an important game, um, just yeah. to start off. Yeah, no, number one, we wanted uh, wanted to see him uh, earlier. For, so for the, I think for the Argentina camp, we, we, we tried to get him. He was then, uh, he didn't have his passport finished. Now I think it is sorted out, so we we would like to see him. Uh, he played for at that time. He was playing for Huddersfield. He's a huge guy, uh, a defensive midfielder. Uh, so he he is maybe in a way we are we are kind of short in this position. So we like to see as many players who who play and giving them a chance to to show us what they can do. If we play him or not, we will just have to see that. But we are excited because his profile, he's young, he's, he's tall, he's, he's, he's playing now a really competitive uh, league with Barnsley. Uh, and he's been playing pretty good. He's coming now, uh, I think he, he changed clubs uh, in the January window. So he has been playing regularly and doing really well. So uh, a player for the future, hopefully for us. So, so we just like to see him and give him an opportunity to be with the squad in, in, in this camp. Mm -hmm. And then the second question, um, I know that you said that you uh, weren't really pleased in terms of the technical aspects from Trinidad, um, in terms of whether a lot of long bones and not a lot of opportunities to play on the ground. In terms of technical wise, what are the things that you're trying to correct, whether that be in terms of positioning, how the passes are deployed, um, that you would want to do in terms of for this squad in a very important game? Yeah, it's, it's two things. We are more like going to the basics in our tactics than now, for example, we our tax, tactics will be um, solely for this Mexico camp. So we will have some uh, some things that we would like to emphasize, for example, in our attacking game and then other things we would like to emphasize in our defensive game. So, but but from the, 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 the first game, I, I thought... 
um, they, they went way, way, way too early for the long ball. Uh, we, we, we had like options to play it long, but we wanted them to play it short. We wanted to use the flanks and, and keep the ball more in, in, in the team. But uh, if, if you've watched the matches here in the league, um, but that is basically what they do every day. So it's difficult to change that in two, two sessions. Uh, so they, w when they, they got into trouble, they, they, they kicked it long instead of passing it. And when you have young players, normally they, they don't have the composure, they don't have the confidence to, to maybe play through the first press. So, but this now is a totally, totally different squad. More experienced players uh, used to play in at the high level, used to play in national team games. So I, I don't expect that uh, in the game against Mexico. Okay, Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. Yeah, two questions. One more. Yeah, you have another question? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good here. All right, let's go to Tyrone Davis. Yeah. Good morning, um, Coach. Good morning, Earl. Um, can you just go back to the squad again for me, please? I didn't catch all of the names. It, it's on social media. It's on the JFF social media pages now. So anybody who didn't get it. You can go on it, Jamaica, the JFF social media pages, and, and it's posted there. Okay. Right. Uh, Amari Bell, Jamal Lowe, Ethan Pino, Jonathan Russell, Bobby Reed, Di Mario Phillips, Dex Dexter Lampikiza, Adrian Mariapa, Kevin Lambert, Jamali Wade, Corey Burke, Damien Lowe, Daniel Johnson, Ravel Morrison, Kahim Paris, Richard King, Shaman Nicholson, Trivante Stewart. Konaya Boyce Clark, Amal Knight, Javain Brown, Kemal Lawrence, and Leon Bailey. Hopefully, uh, nobody nobody is angry towards my pr pronunciation. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good. Thank you, Coach. So, Coach, um, I know that um, the captain is out. So, are you much confident in the two goalkeeper that we have? Yeah, we we have we have three keepers. Uh, right. So we have Jamali, who played uh, in Cameroon, did a really good game in Cameroon, and he played also a part in the second game against Trinidad. And we have Amal Knight, uh, a, a goalkeeper with experience from the national team. Sadly, he, he just went the same time we came to Jamaica, so I didn't even see him play uh, league matches. So, so we are excited to see him, but he has, he has experience uh, from the national team. So two really qualified keepers. And then we have Konaya Boyce Clark, who is, has played with the youth national teams of Jamaica, is now at Reading and is highly rated there. So we are equally excited to, to, to see how he is in, in this camp. So yeah, we, I think we are, we are improving a lot in this position on the pitch. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to I Am Sure Sport. Good, good morning. Uh Coach Hal Grimson, good morning, Mr. Bailey, and to all the other persons here. All right. All right. Just, just one correction. I know you originally said there are five players from the last camp that are in this present squad, but it's actually seven. Yeah, from yeah. Who just wanted to. Sorry, I did, I did not count uh, uh, Mariapa and I did not count Ravel Morrison because they have normally been in this squad. Okay. Okay. No, I understand. All right. The, 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 Second, well, that's just um, my first question is as it relates to the time of preparation. I know this is a longer camp, and um, but Mexico have a game on the 23rd um, and then they have one on the 26th. We will not have a game with the majority of the players um, that are coming in mm -hmm. leading up to that, but you have around four or five days before the team goes off. Do you, do you believe that that is enough time to... to get your philosophy or your style of play or your um what you want to do on the field um with these players before the game against mexico not having them um to play a game you haven't seen pinnock as you admitted and there are a couple others that you're probably playing at a high level but you have not seen yeah that, that is actually a good question so we decided early on to have only one, one camp or, or no, just one match and focus on the Mexico because we already knew that we would have two games 
against Trinidad prior to the camp, and we we plan with a game against Guatemala after the camp. So we would have um, seen a lot of players in these four matches. Now it's a little bit changed since the Guatemala game was off, but still we think the priority uh, of all these matches is on Mexico. So we like to focus on the preparation for that match and to get players tired or injured maybe playing another friendly uh, two or three days uh, prior to Mexico. We, we, we thought that was not clever. Instead, we wanted to bring the players to Jamaica. So the camp will be in Montego Bay. We, we wanted the players to live and experience Jamaica, connect to the people here um, and connect to the, to the, to the, to the country. So, so that was one reason we wanted, yeah, to, just to be closer to the people here in our preparation and not focus on a friendly for these players. So that, that, was, that was our thought process behind only one game in this, in this window. All right, make it quick now. I am sure sport, because we have quite a few people waiting. Oh, not a problem. The second question is, in, 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 in the games against Trinidad, you, you started one, Alwyn Harvey, and the other one was Joshon Anglin in midfield. Then you made substitution and, and Ravel played in a deeper role. This, this one, you, you have Lambert and uh, John Russell, who can play CDM. Is, is, is the plan um, going ahead to deploy those two players there without necessarily asking Ravel to, to, to play as deep as he did in Argentina and in the two games against Trinidad and Tobago? Yeah, I, I will not, maybe if in a personal call, uh, I would yeah. answer that to you. But of course, I'm not going to give you how we are going to play. But all of them can, can for sure and Ravel showed us against Argentina where they swapped uh, position, DJ and Ravel. And Ravel played the deeper one and DJ went higher up on the pitch. So Ravel is a versatile player with, with a huge uh, amount of experience. So we liked what we see, we saw. We were a little bit worried uh, about his, his uh, fitness, but he showed in the game how, how vital he can be uh, for us. So yeah, we have, we have more options. Uh, for this position, so but we, we need to we need to keep on working and finding players who, who can play. But uh, a lot of them played played well, uh, but we need a certain character. In if it's uh, um, only one player in, in a defensive position, defensive midfield position, we need a special character for for that job. Sometimes it's better to play with two. It's easier to to play when you have a, another defensive midfielder next to you. Well, All right. Thank you. I am sure sport. Let's move to Brian Peter. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, good morning, coach. I have two questions for you. Um, the five players that you included from the last camp, what did it, what did you see from them that caused you to choose them over players that you didn't select it? And my second question, Dijon Whisper Richards, he's not selected. He was perhaps our most attacking threat in the two games. We need goals. So what was your thought process in, in not selecting him? Hello. Yeah, I... I uh, what, was the question finished? Yes, yes, good. Uh, so five players uh, that we think and wanted to see play with this squad to see how, how they would how they would do with um, with playing with, let's say, better players, more experienced players. I think they can all take step up playing with better players around them. Uh, so not that others were bad. We just want to see these guys. It was positions that we needed. So we looked maybe to, to the guys we just stopped, stopped working with. That will not be I, in my... Um, yeah, I think in the future we will not take so many from the local league, I would guess, but but let's see how they do. Uh, regarding Whisper, uh, we were really happy with him, really happy with him. Uh, now, just remember, I was, I was criticized for picking him. Some thought that was a, a silly thing to do. And he did really well for a 17-year-old, and for sure the future is his if he if he continues to work hard 
that is no no doubt in our mind as a coaching staff. He, he's not the final product, of course, uh, uh, but I believe he will be a, a national team player for Jamaica in the future, and I guess in the close future. And we considered him like like others for this camp. Um, now the reason we we did not was one that that there's a lot of things going on in his life. He is he is making a big move to a big club um, yeah, like Chelsea, and and uh, they don't sign average players. So so it just shows uh, how they think of him. So he's moving to another country. He's changing clubs. Uh, so it's a lot of things going on in his. His mind. So we are also need to protect uh, a player like this. Don't put uh, too much load and pressure on on him at this stage. But it's it's uh, it's like many of the other players. We we know, uh, and at least think we know, after this this week, what they can give us now and in the future. So for sure, you will see him again in in the national team. That is, there's no pressure on the kid. We don't want to put pressure on this kid. All right, Brian. Thank you, man. Let's move now to Jeremy Brown. All right. Thanks, Earl. Good morning, coach. Morning. All right. So Jamaica, Jamaica has had their problems um, scoring goals. The last man to score a goal for Jamaica in an international match, Justin McMaster against Cameroon. Um, is he now a forgotten man? I mean, we haven't seen or heard of him since. What's the deal with him? Yeah, the, the best we know, he's trying to find a, a club, if I'm correct. Correct, guys? Yeah, so he, he's searching for a club. We, we've been trying to to follow up on him. But, uh, yeah, no, no, he's not forgotten at all. And if, if he if he can score for us, of course, we, we want to have these guys on board. But we'll see what, what, um, what his career lies and goes. So, no, no, he's not forgotten. All right, thank you. All right, let's move to, who is that now? Mr. Smith? Yeah, thanks, Earl. Good morning, coach. Morning. Um, a few questions. Um, the fans are displeased with the aesthetics of our football. Just for clarity purposes, um, coach, will the 4-4-2 system be the staple of our football going forward? No, sir. Uh, well, when we need a 4-4-2, we play a 4-4-2. So... So it's it's good, like I said, the, the basics, the basics are good to teach in a four four two, and we were thinking about the basics basics in the last camp, but normally we don't care what system we are playing, it it's just what fits the purpose of the game. If we will play a four four two or a different system against Mexico, will be according to how we think we can we can do a good game and, and hurt them and win them. Okay, and my, my final question, Coach. So in a previous interview, you mentioned a lack of a player profile. Now, how difficult was it to assemble this squad and is your backroom staff and administrative staff actively aiding you with the scouting and development of a database? Yeah, we have been working really hard. More or less, our time has gone into this. You have to take into account we are foreigners, so we didn't know much about Jamaican football before we arrived. So that has been our priority to, to learn as much about the players, where they are playing, how they are playing, etc. cetera. It's a, it's a lot of players Jamaica has all over the world. So my first two months uh, were focused on the players here in in Jamaica, so I, 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 I've tried to see as many games as possible in the league and on the TV. So January and February was more or less dedicated for for the the players playing domestically. Now we have to now we have to search uh, to the other players. So so the, the database not only for us as a coaching staff, but for future coaches of Jamaica, I think is really important. And at all the age levels, that when you when you start, you have uh, access to a database of what is available and how these players have have been doing for Jamaica. And I'll t I can tell you that this is changing rapidly. We are working really well with with the coaching staff, is with the JFF, trying to do the best 
uh, like database av available to us. So we have apps, we have uh, scouts helping us. So this will change uh, hopefully for the future for Jamaica. All right, thank you very much, man. All right, let's move to Mr. Reed. From now on, we have one question because we, the coach has five more questions to answer, and that's it. So, Mr. Reed. Good afternoon, Coach Al Grimson, and good afternoon to the Earl Bailey and everybody in the chat. Um, my question is that Mexico will rest their key players for the, the game upcoming against Jamaica, the six players, Lozano and uh, the players are players in Europe. What is the plan going forward in this Mexico game? Because it's, it's a do or die moment for Jamaica and for Mexico if they lost the game. What are the plans going into this game and what, what success plan would you go, in, go, go for to this game? Really, really. So, so the the plan. How uh, you mean the plan? How we are gonna win? How we're gonna plan to win Mexico? Are you, yes. are you basically asking what is the plan to win Mexico? Yes. Yeah. So of course, of course, tactically we we're not gonna say how we would like to play against Mexico in a in a in a press conference. But but it's always the same principles. You you know they are really strong in transition for example so we always have to be balanced when we have the ball it's it's things like this they they are quick they change positions up front the wing players are really good one v one so that's emphasis in defense we we need to take care of then they have some weaknesses uh, that we would like to exploit and for sure i'm not going to talk about those here so there's a few things that we we think we can we can hurt them, but we will see. We will see. Or you will see. Thank you, sir. Let's move now to Eddie Guna. Eddie, your question. One question. Eddie got sleep. Hello? Eddie? Eddie Guna? You can take the next next one. All right, let's go to Rashid Parchment again. Uh, I would say the final. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Eddie. You're on. Yeah, yeah. You yes. Sorry about that, Earl. Thank you. Um, morning, Coach. Did morning. you get a chance to? Did you get a chance or attempted to look at other players that have not represented Jamaica as yet? Players just receiving passports. That has just received passports. Yes. Uh, you have to be more specific. What, what players are you talking about then? Eddie, the coach looked at some new players uh, recently. Are, are you saying that there are other players out there with passports who would want to play? And, and uh, for, 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 yes. for example, Tida Taylor Hart. Yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. We, we've, we've, it's difficult to see matches from Kido Taylor. Uh, I know he's trying to to change clubs. He's for sure one of the players that we we want to see and we wanted to see, but we cannot we cannot see everyone at the same time. Uh, so we only can we we only can select 23 uh, in the last squad and and the same here we we, were, we wanted to see the players that we picked. So uh, but he is one name that we have been talking about. Yes. But, Hopefully we can we can play an under twenty one national team game soon, so so we can see those players who are who are young uh, and promising for Jamaica. All right, man. Thank you. All right, any other question, Rashid Parchment? You have one more. Yeah. Um. About That's it. Really Final question. It's about what you said about Justin McMaster, but also you noting that you you have a certain profile and characteristic you look for when building a squad. So I want to ask about unattached players and what you look for. What is your stance on unattached players? And also, what are what's the profile you look for when selecting players and characteristics? So it's, diff it's different between uh, what kind of matches we are playing, of course. So we, we go for the things we know when we, when we select for a camp like this one against Mexico. So we go for, how, how, how can we say, the... 
yeah, the certainty of players and playing at the highest level, etc. But when we play matches like Mexico, we have more flexibility in looking at players who are maybe we, we don't know too much about. And it's difficult to, to see matches, for example, uh, Delano Splat or Tyler Roberts and those things. It's difficult for us to see that. So so we call them in because we we have heard and we have scouts and we have maybe one or two youth matches that they are playing. So we are looking at the same with uh, with Whisper. He hasn't played a, a senior football. So it's difficult to, to kind of evaluate the players to the senior football standard in the international level. So um, on a touch players, of course, in a in a in a national team is difficult to select, to select them. So we have we have in this camp uh, Mariapa and uh, and um, Ravel who who are not playing at the moment. They are looking for for clubs, uh, and we we then selected them for the camp against Trinidad so we could see them and evaluate their fitness, etc. So. It's different reasons for different players uh, all the time. So it's not like a one rule about uh, non-attached players. Thank you, Rashid. Thank you, Coach. Coach, if you don't mind, I'm going to take another question from Jeremy and finish this one. Jeremy, you're, you're on? Oh, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, thanks to everybody who um, joined us this morning. Um, of course, a lot of information out there. Uh, for those who didn't get the squad, it's on the Jamaica Football Federation um, social media pages, so you can go there and, um, and download. Thank you very much. We will have another press conference, maybe at the game itself, um, but stay tuned. Thank you. <laughs>